Good evening and welcome to Bath High School for tonight's matchup between the Columbus Grove Bulldogs and the Bath Wildkins. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And Josiah, it's hard to believe that we're already into basketball season. It was just a few weeks ago you and I were out at a soccer tournament getting to the end of the fall season, but here we go. Moving inside, winter season is underway. These Bath Wild Kittens, two games under their belt already. Columbus Grove, this is their second of the season. But we have an excellent matchup here in the early going between two teams, rich in history, very familiar with one another as well. Yeah, like you said, especially for this home team, you know, looking up at the wall, you know, 900 wins for, you know, the, the girls' basketball program here. So a, a rich tradition, as you said, of winning a lot of games, and that's something that uh, Coach Malk wants to continue here tonight. And an opportunity here to mention is w with a possible win tonight, win number 450 as uh, Columbus Grove gets off early. And just like that, out to a quick three-point lead. As you see Lauren Akmudi come out and, Columbus Grove was able to control that opening tip. She came down in rhythm and hit the three-pointer, lobbed to the inside by the Wild Kittens, and that was Ann Oliver with the answer. You know, and we haven't had a chance to even go over the starters yet as we have a little bit of a break. We'll look at the starters for the Columbus Grove Bulldogs. Number two, Lauren Ockmoody. Number three, Jalen Sauter. Number five, Bryn Fortman. Number 12, Sage Clement. And number 23, Nicole Nesby for the Bath Wild Kittens. Number two, Faith Clark. Number 20, Rachel Clark. Number 22, Claire Faust. Number 32, Ann Oliver. And number 33, Elena Oliver. You know, we saw, you know, both these teams are gonna like to play up tempo. We're seeing that here in the early going. And we were talking prior to coming on air, Josiah, the height of Bath is going to be something that Columbus Grove is going to have to um, find some way to, to handle and kind of try to f counter in some way. You know, Bath out there, three girls six foot or taller in the starting lineup. Well, and I think we'll see the different styles of play tonight, especially like you said, with that size advantage for Bath. You know, a player six one, six foot, six foot, all in the starting lineup. So um, Columbus Grove is going to have to find a way to keep it tight and not allow them to get shots near the basket. So both free throws were good for Oliver as Bath is on top 4-3 here in the early going. Rockwood, he gets it off. Kicks it back outside. There's Clement. Now Grove to the inside to Nesby. Nesby, though, has this one poked away. Oliver going to try to run out. One-on-one -on -one goes all the way in. Great defense by Akmudi that time. Got her hand on the basketball, but didn't cause the foul. Ball went out of bounds. Last touch by the Wild Kittens. So the Bulldogs will take possession. Well, we see Bath continue in this three-quarter court. 2-2-1, two, two, try to speed up this Columbus Grove team as they've done here a couple times, forcing another turnover on this Grove. Three turnovers here early in this first quarter. So, you know, not really putting a whole lot of pressure on, but just trying to force them to play a little bit faster, and it's worked so far. So fast-moving first quarter already as both these teams want to get out and run and push the pace. Three-pointer on its way. This one's going to be off. Rebound into the hand of Oliver. Put back is good. As you see, Elena Oliver able to put two up. That's her first two points of the night. Pull up from the free throw line. No good. As this time it was Ann Oliver coming up with the rebound. Quickly down the court. Wildkins not hesitating. That three-pointer off the back of the rim. Going to end up out of bounds. Going to go back to the Bulldogs. Well, we've seen here early already just Bath take advantage of that size advantage of getting some offensive rebounds, crashing the board, using that side. And every time a shot goes up, you see them, you know, all attacking the rim. And, you know, it's worked early and it's forcing a lot of pressure here as great take there by Columbus Grove and Nicole Nesby. Nicole Nesby able to have the nice answer on the other side. It's now a 6-5 game in favor of Bath. 5.30 left to go here in the opening quarter. Here's Oliver. Had a little bit of contact as she spinned. It couldn't get that one to go. Rebound ends up in the hands of the Bulldogs as Sage Clement brings it up the floor. Ock Moody works up at the top of the key, swings it around, ends up down in the corner. Long pass behind a three-point line. Good hesitation move that time. Got herself into the lane. Couldn't get that one to go down as Bryn Fortman was just a little bit short on that jumper. 
And we're going to have our first substitution of the night, number 21, Kendall Palti, checking into the game. Well, Columbus Grove will continue to, on offense, play around the perimeter as Bath continues in this pressing 2-3 zone that they like to use their size on. But, you know, they try to get inside, but... You know, looking at who their offensive threat is, especially last game, we look at Lauren Akhmud. He had 27 points against Shawnee. So, you know, a team that will like to, will try to get it inside, but want to find their, you know, gunner from the outside, Lauren Akhmud. Bath in that zone defense, causing a little bit of problems here in the early going for Columbus Grove. As they can't find a lot of space on the inside. They're doing a nice job of recovering on the outside as well. Trying to force it down low. This one gets picked off. Another turnover by the Lady Bulldogs. So here's Rachel Clark. Gets it across half court. Almost lost by Oliver, but Oliver, but able to gather it back in. Three-pointer on its way from Clark. That one's going to be long. Tracked down by Bath, but picked, over, picked off by Akmudi. She thought about trying to run for a second, decided to slow things down, let her teammates catch back up. Yeah, first turnover of the night for the Bath team. You know, Columbus Grove has four here early, so I'm sure both coaches are preaching to their girls to take care of the ball, especially against these two quality opponents that they're facing tonight. And you can see Columbus Grove trying to be quick on that rotation, trying to get to the spots fast, but... Bath with that length, able to get their hands in the passing lane, knock that one away. A couple more substitutions. See number 13, Kirsten Sheridan check into the game for Bath. Also had number 22, Abby Stecksholdy check in for Columbus Grove. Corner three is up. That one's gonna be no good. Going to be over the back that time. Going to go out of bounds. It's going to go back to the Bulldogs. Yeah, good box out there by Abby Stecksholdy. Is you know I'm sure Coach preached is you got to box these girls out. You got to get them out of the lane and um, just to reach over there by the the Bath player and opportunity here for Columbus Grove to cut into this lead. Your Stecksholdy back up top. You can see that zone getting extended. These guards up top doing a nice job of rotating, moving their feet. And that was just a good move by Clark that time. Was able to read it, get her hands on it. Going to try to run out. She's trying to find Oliver down low. But Columbus Grove doing a nice job in transition, getting back on defense, forcing the turnover. Sage Clement coming back into the game. And we see Kelsey Carlson check in for the first time tonight for the Wild Kittens. So both teams going to their benches here early, wanting fresh legs out there. Is I got a feeling we're going to see an up-tempo game pretty much all four quarters. And in the early going, conditioning sometimes can be a problem because you're just not quite sure. You know, you've spent all the time in the gyms. You're trying to get them going. But game speed is very, very different. And so when you're getting into these first couple of weeks of the season, you're not real sure how the girls are going to respond, you know, when it comes time to kind of pick, keep this tempo going. Yeah, and I think both coaches still are trying to figure out their teams. You know, it's like you said, it's early on. Not only fitness, you know, is a big thing, but still trying to figure out which lineups work best together, you know, when to bring in some of those subs. And, you know, it's, it's really a, a game of, you know, trying to figure out your team here early on, and especially playing against some really good competition. Helps you see who, you know, can handle some of that adversity, you know, early on in the year. So Abby Stecksholdy's three-pointer was off the mark, went out of bounds. So Rachel Clark brings it up one more time. Bath now trying to get into the offense. Clark looking for an opening, gets it back out to Oliver. Oliver feeds down low on the inside. Nice move that time by Claire Faust with the good finish. And that puts Bath up top eight to five. Well, just a great you know, cut inside by Claire Faust. Has got really good positioning in front of the basket and was able to just do a quick move and get two easy points for the Bath team. Grove doing a nice job moving the basketball, trying to get the defense to make a mistake. But good sound defense, but that time Akmudi with the good first move pulled up in the lane, able to put that one in to make this a one-point game, eight to seven. 
Under two left to go here in the opening quarter. And just a quick move there by Lauren Moody. As you said, Columbus Grove is doing a great job of moving that ball side to side, making those long arms have to adjust and found Lauren Moody, and she made a quick move and was able to score a bucket for her team. Gonna have a foul. This one's gonna be on number 13, Kirsten Sheridan. It's her first, team second. Cole Nesby and Brian Fortman coming back into the game for Grove. And we're going to have a timeout. Columbus Grove wants to take a timeout and talk about it. We'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. A minute 30 left to go here in the opening quarter. Bath on top, 8-7. to seven. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. It's been a fast-paced first quarter, a lot of up-tempo play. Both teams just trying to find that rhythm. We've seen a, a lot of turnovers, but not uncommon when we're talking about, you know, early season, just kind of working out some of those jitters. But we're seeing Columbus Grove come out of the timeout, and that's not what you want to see with the turnover. Yeah, and sometimes you think, you know, teams that sit in a 2-3 zone just like to sit back, you know, let teams, you know, pass the ball. You know, that's not what this bat team does is they're out pressuring just like you saw there. You know, they came out. Those top two players are really coming out, forcing teams to, to adjust and, you know, force another turnover. And like you said, you know, six turnovers here in this first quarter from the Columbus Grove um, Bulldogs team. So, you know, one thing I'm sure Coach Schrader will be talking to his girls at at the intermission here to, you know, hey, we got to take care of the ball. We got to move it, you know, but we can't turn it over so much. Now here's Clark working to the right side. Gets to the free throw line, but we're going to have a jump ball. Possession arrow is going to stay with the lady, or I'm excuse me, with the wild kittens. As we saw, I believe that was Steck Schulte reaching in there to tie that one up. Clark going to pull the trigger on the inbounds. Going to throw it out wide. Oliver able to gather it in. Moves around with the left hand. Under 40 seconds left to go. You know, we talked about that wild kitten defense, but this, this Columbus Grove defense has done a nice job as well, neutralizing the inside play, forcing things to the outside. As you see Clark throw up another three-pointer, this one's off. Rebound down to the wild kittens. Clark has it one more time. 15 seconds left to go. Claire Fowles doing a really good job of trying to post up and get position here. And our teammates were able to find her, just not in a very good spot last time. But as you said, Columbus Grove defense, last five seconds, doing a great job forcing the shot up. And the last second shot gets put up, but it is not going to find the mark. And that is going to bring the opening quarter to an end. After one, Bath is on top of Columbus Grove, 8-7. to seven. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. Second quarter just about underway here at Bath High School as Bath is on top 8-7. to seven. You know, We mentioned it a couple of times, fast-moving quarter, up-tempo play. These teams have really been getting after it here in the early going. Right now the early struggles seem to be Columbus Grove trying to figure out this Bath zone defense. And Bath doing a really good job getting hands high and a great pass there by Nesby to her teammates for an easy bucket. Jalen Souter with that one doing a nice job moving without the basketball into the lane as Columbus Grove is on top nine to eight. Here's Clark. It's a down low to Oliver. Oliver swings it outside wide. Three-pointer on its way. This one's going to be no good. And a fight for the loose ball, jump ball. And possession arrow is going to favor the Wild Kittens. And Bath not finding a whole lot of luck, you know, outside, 
you know, the three-point line there. You know, they do like to shoot a lot from out there and then crash the boards if it is a miss. But, you know, being an offer so far from behind the three-point line. Clark tries to go behind the back but loses it. Akmudi comes up with it. Nice bounce pass to her teammate. As we see Sage Clement able to finish that one for two more. As this is now a three-point lead, 11-8 to eight in favor of Columbus Grove. And Grove continuing to play that tough man-to-man -man defense, picking up the point guard at half court and you know, making it difficult for Bath to kind of get into their flow of their offense here. Good feed on the inside. Good, strong move by Ann Oliver. She's able to put that one off the glass for two. Well, and that's where Bath's found all their success so far tonight is you know, really getting the ball up high and then finding that post player ducking in as we got a nice block there by Bath, and they're off. So Ann makes the two-pointer on the one end, goes down on the defensive side, gets the rejection, comes back, tries to get another one off the glass, but this one's going to be short. Sauter decides to pull it back out. Long pass over to Clement. As Grove now just works it around the perimeter, tries to get it inside, gets to the free throw line. Try to go back out, but gets poked away as Rachel Clark comes up with the steal. Clark working through some traffic, trying to get inside and ends up losing it off her knee. So it's going to go back to Columbus Grove as we see Kendall Palti check back into the game. We also see Abby Steckscholdy come in for Columbus Grove. Back to a one-point lead. Columbus Grove on top, 11-10, 5.40 left to go here in the first half. Nesby, good movement underneath. A little bit off on that pass, though, so Steckscholdy has to pull it back out. Hawk Moody for three off the front of the rim. Oliver comes up with the rebound. And really a good look there for Lauren Hawk Moody as teammate drove into the middle of the paint and found her and just wasn't able to knock it down. So here's Faith Clark with the right hand. Kicks it back out into the corner. His bath being patient, trying to find something open. Gets it down low to Oliver and she's going to be fouled as there's a pretty big size disadvantage down low between Ann Oliver and Lauren Ockmoody. And that actually ended up going against Abby Steckscholdy as they had double teamed Oliver down low and Steckscholdy picks up her first foul of the night. That is Columbus Grove's second team foul. As Oliver makes both of her free throws, she is perfect. Here in the early going, four for four, and puts her team back on top, 12 to 11. Bath continuing with that extended 2-3 zone out here. and You know, we've seen some success when Columbus Grove's able to quickly break it. You know, that 2-2-1 two, two, press, get it down quickly, down low. It's just they haven't been able to finish off of it. And sometimes, you know, we've seen that where they almost are telegraphing what they're doing. Bath doing a great job of reading it. And we're going to have another foul. This one's going to be on Steckscholdy as well. So she picks up two fouls here in less than a minute. And we'll see if she's going to stay in or if Coach Schrader is going to have her take a seat. Player Faust is at the free throw line, misses her first. And we do have a couple of Bulldog substitutions, but Abby Steckshold is going to stay on the floor. That's Faust's second free throw is good. Bath pushes their lead to two at 13-11. Just over four minutes left to go here in the first half. Ock Moody has to get rid of it as Bath is putting on the pressure. This one gets poked away, another turnover. And Rachel Clark is coming back the other way. The Wildkittens trying to get their offense set up. 
Well, you just see that length and how they take advantage of it. You know, they force the player to one side, and then they try to make that long pass over top, and it just hasn't been working out for them. That was a good, strong move that time by Oliver, but couldn't get that one to go down. Rebound, rebound comes down to the Bulldogs. Stack Schulte almost threw that one away. Nice job by Sage Clement to get that one back down as the Bulldogs here are just trying to move things and trying to find some space. Stack Schulte has some room. Let's the three-pointer go. No good. Clement comes down with the rebound. Hawk Moody working against Faith Clark. Wind dribble into the lane. Gets that one to go. Nice recovery by the Lauren Hawk Moody to get that one in and tie this game at 13. Yeah, she's so tough when she takes one or two dribbles to the basket. And even in that opportunity, you know, got the ball kind of stripped away from her, but she was able to gain control and put that six-foot shot in. See Nesby checking back in, as does Bryn Fortman for Columbus Grove. They're going to get the ball back. Quickly able to get it up into the front court, but the trap's coming in the corner. It's a dangerous spot. And before the turnover, we have a foul. Columbus Grove wants to talk about it. It's just a 30 seconds, so we'll keep it here. You know, Josiah, we talked about early season. You know, we're only into week two of girls' high school basketball here in the area. But once again, as you start looking at the area teams and, you know, these two included, you know, we have a lot of really good teams in the area. Should be in store for some really good basketball once again this year. Yeah, and, you know, as you said, just looking at, you know, just the area, especially, you know, even the WBL, you know, a, a solid basketball conference, you know, on the men's and the women's side, you know, but we were talking a little bit before, is just, you know, just the quality, you know, programs. Not only, you know, like you said, we were called, we called a soccer game, you know, Shawnee, you know, congrats to them. Give them a mention of, you know, winning, you know, state and the, the boys' um, soccer, but, you know, just a lot of really good athletes, you know, and, you know, it's always a privilege, I think, you know, to broadcast here for WOSN and be able to see, you know, the quality players, um, you know, not just quality athletes, but quality, you know, players with a lot of character. Absolutely. We get the best seats in the house to call some of the best games in the area. Couldn't ask for anything better. And here we are tonight as Coach Malk tries to pick up his 450th victory. But Columbus Grove doing a nice job keeping this one close as we are tied at 13 with under three to go in the first half. This one gets poked away, going to be last touched by Kelsey Carlson as it's going to go out of bounds and going to go back to Columbus Grove. And turnover number six on the night for the Bath Wildcats. It's not, it's not hard to imagine what the point of emphasis is going to be for both coaches in the locker room here at halftime. They both have left opportunities out on the floor because of these turnovers. And you know, regardless of whether or not it's early season or not, neither one of them are going to be happy with with some of the sloppy play they're seeing. That's going to be a kick ball out of bounds. So it'll stay with Columbus Grove. See Hawk Moody going out of bounds. See if they can get a good inbounds play. This one has to go back out. Is Think, just think that length of Bath is just continuing to give Columbus Grove issues. Not getting a lot of clean looks, and this is going to be another turnover. As this one's going to be over and back as the Wildkits are going to take over just past midcourt. Yeah, turnover number 10. But like you said, with that, the, that length that Bath has, you know, really their middle person in that zone you know, is almost on the foul line, you know, forcing you know, them to play even farther up the field, or I'm sorry, farther up, still thinking soccer here, <laughs> farther up the basketball court. So, you know, they can't really get comfortable in their offense. Ren Fortman almost able to jump that last pass, get the turnover, but it went off her fingertips out of bounds. Wildcats are going to continue with the possession. Well, and Columbus Grove switching it up here on defense, going to that 2-3 zone, see if they can force a turnover, which they almost did. Say last touched by Columbus Grove. So it's going to stay with the Wild Kittens as we see Rachel Clark go out of bounds. Lob on the inside to Oliver. Oliver working in the paint. 
Has to work through a double team. Gets it out, gets another touch. Or excuse me, that's actually Faust. Claire Faust doing a good job on the inside to not have that one taken away from her. But Columbus Grove able to come up with the turnover regardless. Well, you'd like to see Claire Faust, especially with her size, when she gets it down in the post, it's just to go up. You know, there's a chance to draw some contact or draw a foul and, you know, decide to pass it out in that situation and ended up being a turnover. Shot is up, and that one is going to be short as kind of a micro. So, <laughs> just a good look at what Bath is doing down there. As soon as it got brought in on the inside by Sauter, four Bath defenders were around her. She's right at the basket, and she can't even try to go up because of the defense that the Wild Kittens are playing right now. Under a minute left to go. Yeah, another really unforced turnover by this Bath team. Six turnovers here in the second quarter. So only had two in the first quarter, six here in the second quarter. So, you know, and some of these have been really unforced where Columbus Grove's not making them make these passes. They're just trying to force it inside and turning the ball over. So Faith Clark picks up the foul. That is her second of the night. Under 40 seconds left to go here in the half. We'll see if Columbus Grove wants to play for the last shot. This one gets poked away. Here comes Faust. Claire's going to take it in. Did a nice job of not dragging that foot. Turnaround jumper is good for two. Just as I said, I'd like to see her go up when she gets that low in the post. And like I said, does a really good job of not dragging her foot and was able to finish. Looking for a shot. This one's up, going to be blocked. And we're going to have a foul with four seconds left to go here in the, in the half. As Bryn Fortman is going to go to the line to shoot two free throws. And Oliver picks up that foul as that is her first of the night. Foreman's first free throw is no good. Kendall Palti checking back in the game. Fortman lines up her second free throw. It's on its way, and it is good. So she splits the pair to make it a one-point game. Two seconds. Clark going to try to get off a shot. Gets it off a clean look. Not able to get that one to go in, and that's going to bring the first half to a close. After two quarters, Bath is on top of Columbus Grove, 15-14. We'll be back with the second half right here on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Halftime just about over here at Bath High School as Bath is on top of Columbus Grove, 15-14. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. And, you know, Josiah, very entertaining first half. Uh, both teams up and down. You know, we saw some, you know, saw some turnovers. We saw some good play, too. You know, you mentioned Lauren Ackmoody and what she did in game one. She led the scoring here in the first half for Columbus Grove. We've seen the height of Bath come into play, a little bit of everything from both sides. Yeah, and I think both teams are, you know, really trying to adjust to, to continue to play their style. But, um, you know, the defenses here tonight have done a really good job. You know, only 15 to 14, you know, in favor of Bath so far tonight. So, you know, both teams, you know, continue on the defensive end. It's just really is taking care of the ball, you know, for both teams, as we mentioned right before the end of the um, first half was, you know, just both teams. I'm sure the emphasis of both coaches were we got to take care of the ball, you know, and um, for this Bath team, you know, they continue to do that 2-3 high pressure um, zone um, that they've, you know, done for years. Um, you know, but this, you know, still this, you know, man-to-man -man defense of this Columbus Grove is really making it difficult for this Bath to find their offense. Rachel Clark with the three-point try. That one's going to be off as both teams here have not been able to come away with points on their opening possessions. Nice feed on the inside, but Sauter not able to handle the balls. It came in right around her feet, able to gather it in, gets it over to Nesby. Nesby puts a shot up. That one's no good. Clark with the rebound. Clark going to push it up down into the corner. 
Oliver works that baseline. She's forced out of bounds. The official right there saying that she wasn't pushed. She just lost her balance. So it's going to go back to Columbus Grove under seven left, seven minutes to play here in the third quarter. Bats continuing in this three-quarter 2-2-1. Two, two, right back into their 2-3 zone. And looks like they made a little bit of adjustment as number two, Faith Clark, is face guarding number two, Lauren Ockmoody for Columbus Grove. So we'll see if they're trying to, to negate her impact on the offensive side. Yeah, playing kind of a modified zone here is just playing it with four people and Clark is just not giving Ockmoody <laughs> any room out there. They're going to make somebody else on this Grove team beat him. Here's Fortman. Yeah, almost playing a 4v4 game out there on this side. And a little adjustment you see from Greg Malk as Coach Schrader decides to call a timeout, see if he can make some adjustments here. So Coach Schrader is going to take a full timeout. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Looking for that perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan? WOSN can now be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for a holiday. Sign up at app.wosn.tv or by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. So Columbus Grove taking an early timeout here in the third quarter as they saw Bath really modify that defense as Clark is just not going to do anything to let Ock Moody free. So they're going to have to find some other ways. And they come out and turn the ball over coming out of the timeout. Foul. She's going to run with the right hand. Able to get it up. Can't get it to go, but picks up the foul. Yeah, not the play that Coach Schrader called in that timeout. And, you know, it's just something they've had struggle with tonight is those turnovers as that was turnover number 12 along the night for this Columbus Grove team. And, you know, it is a big thing when you take out your, your best player, you know, out of the equation and you're forcing some other players to, to step up and, you know, really run their offense without a person in it. So Claire Faust missed her first free throw. She's one for two on the evening. Excuse me, one for three and now two for four. 16-14, Bath on top. Ock Moody brings it up, has to get rid of it. Clement now works around with the left hand. Feeds Nesby down low, but nice block by Faust. Yeah, really a good possession there by Columbus Grove as they used Ock Moody to screen, but Nesby, you know, firsthand got to see some of that length from this bath team and a good block by Faust. Good back doors. Clark with the extra pass into the corner. The three-point no good, though. Ock Moody comes up with the rebound. She's going to push it up ahead. Fortman. Fortman able to get that one off the backboard for two. We are all tied up at 16 with five minutes left to go here in the third quarter. And that's where Akmudi really needs to, to shine, really, is, you know, if they can get it in possession before Bath gets to set up that defense, you know, if they can get her to the ball and not only score but also create for her teammates, and we saw that on that last possession. Clark's three-point try is no good. Nesby with the rebound and gets it over to Akmudi. Akmudi now works it down into the corner. Fortman almost with the travel that time. Able to get rid of it, though. And three-point try by Clements, no good. Neither team really finding much success you know, from the three-point line. You know, only one three made tonight, and that was from Lauren Ockmoody. I believe that was the first, first shot, shot of the game. First shot of the game, yep. Down low off the glass and in. Claire Faust comes up with two more points to make it 18-16. That's her eighth point of the night. That hesitation a lot of times not going to work. 
as Sauter was trying to get in some better position. And that picked up her feet and got a travel call. So another turnover by the Bulldogs. Uh, just another sign of that length is, you know, you're expecting those long arms to come. So, you know, you might give a shot fake to try to get them up in the air or, or you know, even get a foul and you know, just drag her foot there. And the official was right on top of it. Oliver tried to pass it off, gets picked away by Palti. Palti trying to run the floor, never really had a handle on the basketball, but ends up picking up the foul. She'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. And Oliver, she gets picked up or gets called for that foul, picking up her second of the night. Palti's first free throw is on its way, and it's good. Back to a one-point game, 18-17, as Palti lines up her second free throw. It's on its way, and it is good as well, and we are all tied back up at 18. Back and forth for both of these teams, as we have just about three minutes left to go in the third quarter, and we are tied once again. Long lob down to Oliver. Oliver spins, but left hand off the glass, and good. Uh, great move there by Oliver as you know, was able to catch the lob pass and then collect herself, a little move to the left, and went back over her right shoulder to the left hand and was able to finish. Clark comes up with the loose ball. She's going to spin. Nice misdirection to get around the defender. Up and in. As Rachel Clark gets her first two points of the night, and her team is up four, 22 to 18. Yeah, we have to mention, you know, Columbus Grove has been doing a great job on Rachel Clark. Comes into the game, you know, only two games in, but averaging 15 points a game. You know, just her first bucket there, you know, halfway through the third quarter. We've seen her struggle from behind the arc tonight, but trying to find other ways of doing it. That time getting to the glass. Palti was trying to find Nesby, but it gets poked away. Clark, one more time, running the floor, drops it off to Oliver. Oliver off the glass, can't get that one to go. Some miscommunication down there by a couple of Bulldog players. And a quick timeout by Coach Malk. He's going to retain this possession. Let's see if he's going to take a 30 or a full. It's going to be a full timeout. So we will take a break as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to tonight's scoreboard presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. 201 left to go here in the third quarter. Coach Malk calls the timeout as a couple of Columbus Grove Bulldogs were down there trying to tie it up to see if they can't get the basketball away from one of his players. So able to maintain the possession as Rachel Clark goes out of bounds. Looking for the inbound, gets it out to Oliver. A little bit of a busted play that time as it looks like Ann Oliver, as she was trying to run something, lost her footing. So the Bath Wildkins have to reset. They'll lob it down to Faust. Faust keeping it up high, not wanting to lose it. And the Wildkins going to reset. Long pass across the court. Another long pass. Those can be dangerous, and that one was almost taken away. But last touch by Columbus Grove. Going to stay with the Wildkins. Brent Fortman going to check back into the game. As we see Lauren Akmudi going to take a seat, take a breather. So we'll see what kind of adjustments the Bath defense makes. Nice inbounds play that time. As they found a rolling in, Oliver going towards the basket. As she now has 12 on the night, leads all scores. She's the only one in double digits tonight. Well, on a six-point lead here, and that's been the biggest advantage for either team tonight, and it's been close back and forth, you know, so far. And Bath here up at six, and, you know, we'll see what they draw up here, especially with their best player, Lauren Akmudi, not on the floor right now. Three-pointer on its way by Steck, Schulte, and good. 
That's a big shot by Abby Steckscholdy. As you mentioned, the struggle that both teams had had behind the arc, and that gets them right back into this game as they are only down three now. 24-21, 45 seconds left to go. Rachel Clark works up at the top of the key. Going to drive with the right hand, tries to get off the glass. Looks like she might have been looking for some contact, but it gets no whistle. Rebound comes down to Clement. She brings it up and gets it over to Steckscholdy. Steckscholdy tried to fire another three-pointer. That one is blocked. Steckscholdy in the right spot, though, able to get this one in. So it looked like it was tipped. Now with 20 seconds left to go, Columbus Grove has an opportunity to take the last shot. Fortman. See Coach Schrader just wanting them to take these open looks instead of trying to drive. And this one's going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Abby Steckscholdy. And he's going to go back the other way to the Wild Kid with four seconds left to go in the quarter. And turnover number 16 on the night for Columbus Grove. And Coach Schrader's not too happy about the call. He's hoping to have another opportunity on the offensive side here, but Officials called it off of Grove, and Bath has an opportunity here with four seconds. So we'll see if they draw up. Rachel Clark, she's going to have to go quick. Three, two, one. He's a half-court shot, and it is no good. So a little bit of a slow start to that third quarter, but the scoring heated up towards the end. Going into the fourth quarter, the Bath Wildkittens are on top. 24-21 will step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Taking a look at that Hawker Drywall scoreboard, Bath is on top of Columbus Grove, 24-21. Scoring by quarter so far, Columbus Grove's been consistent, 7-7-7 seven, seven, and seven for the Bath Wildkittens, 8-7-9. and nine. Gives them the three-point lead. And we'll see what Columbus Grove decides to do here in the fourth quarter. See, coming out of the gate, want to put a little bit of pressure. Almost worked that time, but too much Ann Oliver. Or excuse me, Claire Faust. As Faust went to work down low, able to gather that one in off of the tip. And she's going to go to the free throw line for the and one opportunity. Well, Columbus Grove got exactly what they wanted, that long pass. But we just saw the length of Claire Faust and wrestled that ball away from the Columbus Grove. Uh, teammate for old-fashioned three-point play. So Faust, she is now three of five from the free throw line on the night. And that's really been the story of the night for this Columbus Grove team is those turnovers, number 17 on the night. And I think really this quarter is going to come down who can take care of the ball and get the shots that they want. And it, it is a tough night to win if you have, you know, 17 or, or more turnovers. As Columbus Grove is just struggling to try to get into the passing lane and find openings through the length of this um, bath defense. You see Clark lines up another three-pointer. This one's no good. Lock Moody comes down with it. Looking for some space. Had it tied up by Faith Clark. And she comes up with the steal. Clement. Going to work, but a little bit too much on the reach in. She's going to pick up the foul. That's foul number 12, Sage Clement. Only going to be the fourth team foul, or excuse me, the third team foul on Columbus Grove. So they'll take this one out of bounds. Here's Faust. Going back to the inside one more time, and Claire Faust is taking over. That is now her 13th point as Bath now stretches their lead to eight, 29-21. Columbus Grove, they want to take a timeout. They don't want this lead to expand anymore. They're going to talk about it. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Bath High School. Season 18 of Sports Report is underway. Join back to Tamer for a full hour of the most comprehensive uh, sports coverage of the entire area around 
They'll be there all season long on Friday nights at 10 p.m. on WTLW. 6.49 left to go in the game. Columbus Grove took a timeout. They kind of want to try to stop that bleeding a little bit as they have seen Claire Faust finally be able to get going. And when she gets going with a head of steam to the rim, then it's really hard to stop her. She doesn't miss many shots down there. Yeah, and Columbus Grove's continue to try to amp up that pressure. You know, what it does is allow Claire Faust to work in that paint. She's taken advantage of it in the last couple possessions. Good, strong move that time, but can't get it to go down. Second opportunity is no good as well. The rebound comes down to Bath. Sauter did a nice job working down low and getting through traffic. Columbus Grove just not getting a lot of clean looks down there. Rachel Clark dumps it off down into the corner. Goes back out. There's Oliver. Oliver feeds down low. Gets this one to go. And Oliver able to put that in. She hasn't scored in a little bit. It's seen Claire Faust do a lot of the heavy lifting. She wanted to get back in on the action. So now she is the leading point total with 14 here in the game. Claire Faust right behind her with 13. Well, and a strong finish there as you know, she did a really good job of keeping the ball high when she caught it. Sometimes you know, players, you know, post players get into trouble when they bring that ball down, allowing those smaller players to smack at it. She kept the ball high and finished strong through contact. And another turnover, number 19 on the night for this Columbus Grove team. So Jalen Sauter that time trying to find Nesby down low. A little bit too much on that pass as it goes out of bounds. Now we've been talking about Claire Faust and Ann Oliver all night, and for good reason. They combined for 27 points. As a team, Columbus Grove only has 31 they have done all the heavy lifting on the offensive end. Right now, those two are actually outscoring the entire Columbus Grove team. As Faith Clark works around, has to get rid of it, drops it off to Rachel Clark. Rachel gets it down to Faust. Faust gets it over into the corner. Three-pointer on its way. This one's going to be no good. Good box out that time by Sauter. Ock Moody, she's going to drive. Fortman, extra pass out to Clement. Clement's three-point tries, no good. Fight for the rebound. And it's just that height of Bath, Bath right there is. Saw Oliver be able to go up off the top. Faith Clark finally able to connect as Bath gets their first three-pointer of the night. Yeah, big bucket there has really extended this lead now to 13 points. Fortunate Columbus Grove is they've got to score quick and they've got to score often. Sauter's shot off the front of the rim, but Oliver loses it out of bounds as Steck Schulte and Nesbitt comes back into the game as they've got to find some way to score here. Down 13, only 4.09 left to go. Well, and you have to say a lot about this defense as Ock Moody shoots and she hasn't scored at all here in the second half. Uh, just has made it difficult for her all night to get easy shots. Probably the best look that she's had here in the second half. Yep, just a little bit too strong on that floater. Can't get it to go down. Possession's going to stay with the Bulldogs, though. She tried to get it into Nesby. Gets poked away. But Fortman able to come up with it. Nesby ends up back with it. And after an extra bounce, Nicole Nesby gets her fourth point of the night. So now 11-point deficit as Columbus Grove has to come up with some stops on defense. Um, Bass should be in no hurry here. Run their offense, see if they can get you know, every player to touch the ball and not force any shots and see if they can take a lot of time off this clock here. Columbus Grove with plenty of fouls to give, so you think that they can afford to be a little aggressive here trying to get a steal, not want Bath to take off too much time. Steck Schulte, she inches up, trying to guard Rachel Clark. And at some point, they're going to have to make a decision here on they're going to try to get this basketball or they're going to just going to let Bath bleed this clock. Well, and as you can see, they're kind of pulling that stall here as they quick reversal and they wisely pull it back out to Rachel Clark as 
She's just being patient. And so far, I've already run about 45 seconds off of this clock. 2.45 left to go. Bath completely content to let this clock run. It's going to all be on Columbus Grove here to try to force something. Balti tried to go out. Oliver able to get rid of it. And here's Faith Clark working against Fortman. Hawk Moody, right idea. Tried to see if they couldn't force her to kind of use half court line as an extra defender. But saw Oliver smartly dribble away and finally do have a foul. Does this one will go out of bounds? And we're going to see Jalen Sauter and Sage Clement check back into the game. Well, most, te most teams don't have the luxury of having players with that size have the ability to handle the ball. You know, forcing the other team's post players to come out and, uh, you know, pressure. So Bass got a lot of luxury here, <laughs> having those players and their ability to handle the ball with all this pressure. Faith Clark moves around to the left, back to the right. Doing a nice job working against Deck Schulte. She saw her try to go for the ball that time and lost her footing. Now she's going to foul Oliver with a minute 45 left to go. As looks like Coach Schrader wants to take another timeout, try to set some things up, probably let the girls understand now that they can't waste any more time. So they're going to take a timeout. We'll take a break as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Hawker Drywall and Plastering. Visit us at hawkerdrywall.com to see how we can help you. Minute 45 left to go. Bath on top, 34-23. Nate Garlock alongside Josiah Stober. You know, in the backdrop of this, we kind of mentioned it in the first half. Coach Malk, you know, with a win tonight, today will pick up his 450th career victory. He's had a lot of success here at Bath. The way that they've played tonight, looks like he's going to have another one of his you know, patented successful teams. The height that they can throw out here, the speed, athleticism of Faith and Rachel Clark, uh, you know, between what they can do with uh, Ann Oliver, Elena Oliver, and Claire Faust, you know, they are a tough matchup for anybody. Yeah, absolutely. You don't see many teams that can put out three players over six feet tall. You know, but also with the ability of Rachel Clark to kind of run the offense, you know, be able to, as teams focus so much on, you know, protecting that paint, you know, she's able to, to knock down some shots and hasn't had a whole lot of luck tonight, but we know she's capable of doing it, you know, of getting hot and getting hot really quick. Um, so, you know, Coach Malk, you know, like you said, another one of his teams of just, you know, really quality here as, you know, a foul, quick foul and a double team by Columbus Grove. But, you know, just as I was saying is, you know, the team that they can put out here every single night is going to be a very difficult matchup for a lot of teams in the WBL. Yeah, absolutely. You know, right now we're looking at an 11-point game. But if Rachel Clark was able to knock down even a few of those wide-open three-pointers she's had tonight, this is a completely different makeup of a game. As you see her make her first free throw of the night. Just her third point. Second free throw is good as well. 36, 23, a minute 23 left to go. As Faith Clark is going to take a seat. There's Ock Moody. Works through the screen. Gets it over to Fortman. Fortman tries to go baseline, loses it. Gathered it in by Oliver. And Rachel Clark going to work up against some pressure. Bath able to get it back over midcourt, and here comes the foul. And as Ock Moody is going to send Ann Oliver to the free throw line one more time for a one and one. She is perfect from the line tonight, going four for four, but this is her first trip here in the second half. Oliver makes the first. She now has 15 points on the night. Second one is good as well. Six for six from the free throw line, 16 points. 
as it was really her starting to find a, or excuse me, Claire Faust really starting to find a groove. You see her come down with that last rebound in the third quarter that really opened things up. You saw Ann Oliver able to, her offense kept her team in this game as they were going neck and neck with Columbus Grove. And then when Claire Faust was able to kind of find her rhythm and, and get going, that's when they really opened this game up. Yeah, well, you see they can win a variety of ways. You know, we talked about their length and, you know, their shooting ability. And some nights they're hitting it from deep, you know, but other nights they're looking to find it into the post to use that size advantage. And they've done it mostly in the post tonight, um, as we see there. But that was a Columbus Grove um, ball there. But, you know, it's great to be able to win in a variety of ways, and they've shown that tonight. A little bit of contact down there with Rachel Clark as she had drove. That ends up out of bounds, but I think the officials kind of looked at that as some incidental contact with 13 seconds left to go. Kinda let that one go by. Ock Moody passes it off. Three-pointer on its way by Sauter off the side of the rim. Rebound comes down to Bath, and that is going to bring this game to a close. Coach Greg Mock picks up his 450th victory as the Bath Wild Kittens knock off Columbus Grove 38-23. You know, Josiah, as a lot of what we thought it was going to be, especially in the early going, Columbus Grove did an excellent job staying with them, keeping this game close, playing that up-tempo game. But in the second half, Coach Malk made an excellent adjustment. They decided they were going to take Lauren Ockmoody completely out of the options, and they were going to have somebody else on that Grove team beat them. And unfortunately for Columbus Grove, they just couldn't quite find that right matchup, especially with who um, Bath was able to put out on the floor. Bath got going. You know, we saw um, Ann Oliver get going, and then Claire Faust really in that third quarter. But Bath looks like they're going to be a dangerous team this year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we saw the adjustments, you know, from a Hall of Fame coach and, and Greg Maw. Uh, congratulations on the 450th, you know, win. But, you know, just making those little adjustments at halftime really changed this game. Like you said, took Lauren Ockmoody out of the game. She didn't score at all in the second half. Um, and, and it forced those Columbus Grove players to adjust. And they just weren't able to do that. And, you know, we talked about it multiple times throughout the broadcast is just the length of this bath team and you know sometimes that plays you know head games with you you know hey i gotta get the ball up quicker i gotta shoot quicker knowing that the length's coming and i think that played a little bit of factor in tonight with this columbus grove team but you know this is a good columbus grove team you know we saw spurts tonight um you know just wasn't able to put it together for four quarters tonight yeah i think when this columbus grove team finds that secondary piece you know that second or third person that can, can score for them consistently they're going to be dangerous as well because you've seen what lauren akmudi can do she can score well first game you, you mentioned 27 points she started off hot tonight before you know um the adjustments by bath kind of shut her down but they get that second or third piece, you know, they're going to be very dangerous as well. We mentioned it talking in, during one of the timeouts, you know, a lot of high-quality basketball in the area. And both of these teams, I got to imagine, as we move through this season and, and we move towards, you know, turning the calendar, you know, these two teams are ones that we're going to be talking about, you know, with obviously aspirations of, of, of good, seem, good, good seasons, conference championships, tournament runs, all those good things. But we got a lot of basketball to go. I'm excited. We're at the beginning of the season, excited to be indoors, excited to be watching basketball. You know, it should be a great season. Yeah, like you said, is you know both these teams, you know, we'll we'll see them plenty of times throughout the year, and um, you know they're they're only going to get better. You know, they both have great coaches um, on their sidelines and great supporting staff, and you know we expect them to get better um, as the year goes on. And like you said, as as you know the new year comes in, you know we're going to be talking about them a lot. So that's just going to about wrap it up for us here at Bath High School. I'd like to thank our sponsor one more time, Hawker Drywall. They're our scoreboard sponsor. As we take a look at the Hawker drywall scoreboard one final time bath knocks off columbus grove 38 23 like to thank our crew lexi and megan working the cameras behind the scenes doing the editing a great job as always we appreciate everything you guys do for josiah stover i'm nate garlock thanks for tuning in have a great night everybody